the chapter, chapter six is called The Night in Question. Uh, and you write in the book, now picture this and keep in mind that this is Purely hypothetical. 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 Yes. Why don't you tell me what might have happened on the night of June 12th, 1994? <laughs> and let's just walk yeah, through the I, Well, first of all, it's, this is a very difficult for me to do this. Uh, it's very difficult for me because it's hypothetical. I know and I accept the fact that people are going to feel whatever way they're going to feel. <laughs> you know, uh, they're going to, uh, uh, you know, some, uh, whatever, uh, whatever they want to feel. In the book, the hypothetical is... Uh, uh, Charlie. Uh, Paul Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> Uh, this guy Charlie shows up, the guy we have to become friends with, and uh, I don't know why he had been by the close house, but it told me he wouldn't believe what's going on over there. And, uh, and I remember thinking, well, whatever's going on over there has got to stop, right? So we kind of hooked up together, and uh, you know, I'm kind of broad stroking this. We go over. Get into Bronco and go over it. Let, let's just go back and do the details. Where did you I'm park? Do the detail. You park in the alley. The park in the alley. Yeah. And you put on a wool cap and gloves. Uh, in the hypothetical, I put on a cap and gloves. Right. And um, you reached under the seat for um, a knife. I always kept a knife in that car for the crazies and stuff because you can't travel with a gun. And I remember Charlie saying, you ain't bringing that. I didn't, right? But I believe he took it. Charlie took the knife? Yeah. In the book. Yeah. Yes. So, the back gate, you go through the back gate? Yes. And it was open or broken or? I don't recall. Okay. I go to the front and I'm looking to see what's going on. Um, and I can see that it appears like Nicole had flop. I had candles all the time. She really did keep her overhead down, I think. And music was on. And uh, while I was there, a guy shows up. You know? So Ron Goldman comes in the back gate. Yeah. A, a, a guy I really didn't recognize. I, I may have seen him around, but I really didn't recognize him to be anyone. And, uh, and I, in the mood I was in, I started having words with him. She says to you, I just came by to return a pair of glasses. Judy left them at the restaurant. Yeah, words to that effect, yes. And, and uh, he was I don't like, know if I believe it or didn't believe it. Uh, it was pretty much immaterial because, you know, uh, I was more concerned about everything, that, that everything that was going on, you know, and I uh, was uh, fed up with it, I guess. And uh, You get into a fight. Nicole comes out. A verbal, a verbal, a verbal fight. fight. Got a little loud, and by that time, uh, uh, Nicole had come out, and we started having words about who is this guy, why is he here, what's going on. And, and she it, says, this is my house, get that the F out yeah, of here. Yes, and uh, which I didn't like, because once again, this is the same person, and if you read the book, you'll see some things that happened in the two weeks leading up to this, that were uh, very, very irritating, you know. Uh, and I think Charlie had followed this guy and wanted to make sure there was no problem. And he brought the knife. As things got heated, uh, I just remember the cold fell and hurt herself. And uh, this guy kind of got into a karate thing. And I said, well, you think you can kick my ass? And I remember I grabbed the knife. I do remember that portion, taking the knife from Charlie. And to be honest, after that, I don't remember. Except I'm standing there and there's all kind of stuff around and um, um, what kind of stuff? Blood and stuff around. You know, we, you know, I hate to say this, but this is not I'm right, sorry. Right. I know we got to back up again. Right. <laughs> it's know? okay. I'm going to back this up. Is hard. This is hard. This is hard. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm going to back up to. to try to make people think that I'm a. <laughs> um, you wrote in the book, I had never seen so much blood in my life. Covered, you're covered. The scene. Can you describe yeah, it? I, I, it's hard for me to describe it. I'm telling you, I don't think any two people could be um, murdered the way they were without everybody being covered in blood. And of course, I think we've all seen the grisly pictures after. So yeah, I think everything was covered, would have been covered in blood. And what 
goes through your mind at a time like that? I don't know. It's like, uh, what happened? You write about removing a glove before taking the knife from Charlie. Uh, you know, I had no conscious uh, memory of doing that, but obviously I must have because they found the glove there. And blacking out. Have you ever blacked out before? Not to my knowledge. No. No, of course. Uh, of course, if something like this would take place in anybody's life, if it were to happen, I would imagine it's something that you would probably automatically uh, have trouble wrapping your, your mind around it. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible.